I want to welcome you to the Palm Sunday services online via YouTube for the Farrar and the Mingo United Methodist Churches. My name is Reverend Phil Dix, and I'm pleased to be the pastor of both of those congregations. And today we want to take a moment to really celebrate and to think about Palm Sunday itself. Along with Palm Sunday, we're going to be also celebrating Holy Communion via this YouTube video. At the very end of the video, we'll be celebrating communion together. So I'm going to ask you, if you'd like, to pause the video in just a moment to be able to get a piece of bread or cracker to use for the communion itself, as well as a chalice that you can use with some type of liquid that you can partake of at that point. If you'd like to pause for just a moment, we'll be glad to pick up in just a second. And now I want to have the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about Palm Sunday itself. And of course, what makes Palm Sunday so special, which are palm branches. I have good news for you that both of our congregations, Farrar and Mingo, on the front steps of the church, there are baskets. And in those baskets are palm branches. We hope that you'll go and to retrieve some so that you'll be able to bring them home. Now, we have a campaign that's going on at our church which talks about Palm Sunday itself. And what we're asking people to do is to take their palm branches and to place them on the windows or on the front door of their homes so that as people come, they'll see these elements of hope and promise that Palm Sunday provides for us and the whole Easter and resurrection time does. Now, I was unable to get a palm branch, but what I do have is something that I think is even better. And that is my grandchildren have taken care of it. And perhaps your children or grandchildren could do the same. And that's to actually make and create a palm branch for you that you can use. I have them on my windows and on my door. And it's a wonderful opportunity to remind myself of the beauty of my grandchildren and the celebration of Palm Sunday itself. Palm Sunday is one of those opportunities when we sometimes remember the story because we've heard it so many times. So I always think it's important for us to take an opportunity to go back and to listen to the real story that the scripture actually says to us and to pick up all of the innuendos, perhaps words that we've not caught before. Sometimes when we have heard the story portrayed for us, but to hear the reality of that story in scripture itself. And so from Matthew, the 21st chapter, let me read to you about this royal welcome, the triumphal entry of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. And when they neared Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethany on Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you and you'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt and her. And untie her and bring the colt and her together with them. And if anyone asks what you are doing, say the master has needs for them and he will send them with you. And the disciples went and did exactly like Jesus told them. And they led the donkey and the colt out and laid some clothes on them. And Jesus mounted it. And nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. And others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed, and all of them shouting, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And then there's the 10th verse. And as he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. That's right, shaken. Unnerved, the scripture says. People were asking, what's going on here? What's happening? And there was a real fear when Jesus came in that very first time. You know, not everyone was celebrating Palm Sunday. Not everyone was celebrating Jesus' coming. Some of them were unnerved at that particular point. Have you seen some of the news lately? Uh, 24-7, that's all we hear is about coronavirus and we hear about fear and being afraid and being shaken. The national news, it's all part of it. Someone said to me the other day, I need to shut it off. I can only take so much of that news. Imagine putting that all into your mind. It can really be terrifying. Can you imagine how scary it is, the times that we live in, and yet the times that Jesus lived in? Even the people of triumphant entry had fear and were afraid at that moment. Well, that all took place in those moments and in those days. You see, before Zantec and before Prozac, there was a thing called prayer with God, and that was what's critically important. This last week, I had a cold, and I knew for certain it was the coronavirus. Oh, I thought to myself, I can just imagine I need to get a testing to know exactly how I'm doing. Someone wrote me an email and said, Pastor, you preached a sermon several weeks back. In fact, I think it was at Thanksgiving time, and you talked about something that helps to deal with fear and being afraid. I thought, oh, no. I went back and I looked up that message and I remember what my prescription was. It was this, rather than focusing on fear, focusing on gratitude and blessing. You see, as I've discovered and as you can discover too, 
that the greatest opportunity for us to relieve ourselves of the focus upon fear and being afraid is that of focusing our minds upon gratitude and blessing. It, it takes control of our life. It removes the other elements. There's no room for them when we focus on gratitude and blessing. And don't we have so many things to be thankful for? Our faith is not to be stolen away from us by anxiety of some type in our life. When I was a kid growing up, my father loved to sing, and he would always have a special song that he would use. It seemed to be whatever the occasion would be, he would have a song to sing for it. One of the songs I remembered, one of the old favorites that he would sing so many times, was a song called, In Times Like These. Do you remember how that song went? In times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips that solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips that solid rock. A couple of years ago, I preached a sermon and I used the acronym for the word FEAR, F-E-A-R. I began each one of those beginning letters with a thought, with an idea to help us to overcome the concept of fear itself. I want to remind you of them today. F, the first letter, was for this. Face your fears with a bias of hope. Hope becomes that element that often displaces fear in our life. And yet, hope sometimes is a difficulty for us. Some people say to me, Pastor, do you really believe all of that? And I say to them, I not only believe it, but I count upon it. E is examine your fears in light of the facts. Do you know how many times in the Bible that Jesus and God remind us, do not be afraid? A hundred times, and a hundred times plus. In Psalm 27, David says why? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? For the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And again, in Psalm 56, 3 and 4, David tells of his strategy for combating fear. He says, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you, O God, in you, God. Those words of praise in God I trust, I am not afraid. Examine your fears in the light of facts. The next was for A, attack your anxieties with action. Uh, my best way to prescribe is to say this, it's gratitude and blessings. For when your mind focuses upon gratitude and blessings, there's no room for fear to take point. Think of all the things, not only God and Jesus, and not only the opportunity for life and for the opportunity of new life and hope, for the opportunity of God's presence with us. Faith is an action for us. R, release your cares to God. Scripture does not promise that bad things will not happen to us. But here's what it does promise that God will be with you. The 23rd Psalm. The eighth, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. When Moses was preparing Joshua to move into the promised land to do battle, that was almost an impossibility for the battles they would have to fight. He wrote in these words from Isaiah, the 41st chapter, the 10th verse. Don't panic, he said. I am with you. There's no need to fear, for I'm your God. I will give you strength. That's gratitude. And that is an opportunity for to remind ourselves of the blessing. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. And I will also hold you steady. And I will keep a firm grip upon you. One of the things I love to practice is something called the breath prayer. It comes from Psalm, the 16th chapter, the first verse. Here's the verse. It says, keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. Repeat after me. Keep me safe, O God, for I 
for in you I take refuge. Let's write it again. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. Now, the reason I call this a breath prayer is because I begin to say the verse as I breathe in and the last part of the verse as I breathe out. So it goes like this. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. Try it with me. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. You know, it's been hard in these times. It's been difficult for all of us and we look for answers somewhere in the midst of it all. And you know, in 2 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, the 14th verse, came this passage. I think it's an answer for us. It's an opportunity for us to remind ourselves of the times we're in and the promise that God makes to us and the element of action that helps us to achieve that. Here's what he says, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. For if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. I will seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will hear and heal their land. I'd like to close today by offering what is called a guided prayer. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and I'm going to give you a thought and ask you to take a moment just to complete that thought as God directs you and as you feel led. Let's join together in prayer. Oh God, you remind us that if we, your people, who are called by your name, will humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our ways, then we will hear from heaven. That's your voice. And you'll forgive us of our sins and the ways that we have have put other things as the focus of our life. And you will heal our land. God, as we begin this prayer together today, I first want to offer up for you a word of praise. Take a moment, my friends, and just think about the words of praise for God's goodness and mercy and glory and share those words of praise with him. And now, oh God, I want to take an opportunity to praise you and to thank you through a word of thanksgiving. Three things that we're grateful for today we want to offer up to you in this prayer. And now, God, we want to confess to you, confess our impatience, our thoughtlessness, We want to put our focus back on you, O God. These are the things that we ask forgiveness for as we confess together. And now, God, we want to lift up persons in prayer the people that we love and care for who are near to us and dear to us. Oh God, I lift them up before you as we each see them and share their names. Oh God, we pray together today for our neighbors for our friends, for those with whom we work. We pray for our families and for our larger family, including our friends. Be with our leaders and those who are being led. Be with those in fear that they might take comfort in faith. Be with those who are suffering that they may be comforted. Be with our doctors and nurses, staff and hospitals, caregivers and frontline workers and researchers. We include in that list others that come to mind in this pandemic, here and around the world. 
Come, O God, as the great physician and the perfect healer. Move to save and protect us as we find total protection in your arms of love and care. Open our eyes to see you, O God, at work. Open our hearts to give as it was given to us, freely, openly, lovingly, in caring ways. Be with the children who are not in school and the parents who are there to provide direction and oversight for them. Be with those children who depended upon school for one meal a day and those who provide those meals. Be with the persons who are without work and the uncertainty, those who are facing unknown futures. Be with the businesses that are closed and those that are open and are overrun with panic customers. Be with those who stock the shelves and worry about not having enough. Oh God, hold us. Take us and use us. Minister through us as the church. You are an ever-present help in need. You are our safety in times of fear. Our lives are in your hands. And so we pray together that prayer that you taught us to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we want to take this opportunity to do what Jesus said, that as often as we gather together to do this in remembrance of him. On the night when Jesus gathered together with his disciples, he took the bread and he broke it, and he offered it to his disciples, saying, This bread is my body, broken for you and many, for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat and be thankful. And likewise, when the supper had ended, Jesus took the cup, and having raised it to heaven, he blessed it. And he offered it to his disciples, saying, This cup is my blood, poured out for you and many, for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink and be thankful. And then Jesus said these words, as often as you gather together, do this in remembrance of me. In reminding ourselves of all the things that Christ has done and is doing for us, let us consecrate and pray together. Oh God, we pray that you will bless both this bread and this cup that we who receive it may receive for us the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is said, O oh God, that what we eat we become and so we partake of this bread and this cup that is offered for us this day and that we take you into our bodies so that who we are draws strength and nourishment from these signs and symbols of your presence, of your great love for us. Fill them with your spirit as we share together this day. And now as Christ with his disciples offered, take of the bread and receive it. And all the people said, Amen. And then this cup, that symbolizes for us liquid love, Christ's love poured out for us, the promise of his presence eternal and forever. Take and drink and be thankful in your hearts. Let us pray together. O oh God, the taste of your love and your sustenance bread is upon our lips and within our hearts. We give you thanks, O God, that you come to meet us at every moment of our life, that remind yourself as you remind us of the faithfulness of the past, your presence in the present, and the future hope and promise that you give to us 
never to leave us and never forsake us and to keep a strong grip upon us. God, I give you thanks for this congregation and those who gather together with us this day. Oh God, I ask that your presence and your angels will come, a hundred thousand, to surround us, to protect us, and to remind us of your abiding presence of love. And as we rest this day, have the angels sing to us songs of faith and remind us that our rock is Jesus, the only one, that we are to be sure, very sure, that our anchor holds and grips that solid rock. For all this we ask in the name of Christ, and everyone said, Amen. Friends, I want to remind you of some special services we have coming up. The Palm Sunday services, as I talked about earlier, will be held uh, online through a Zoom chat rooms. We hope that you'll take an opportunity to join us. There are instructions that are given, as long as a link to you might be able to join us uh, for that particular service. The Farrar Church will be celebrating at 9 a.m., and the Mingo Churches will be gathering at 11. As a guest, we're expecting you, and we invite you to come to any of those and to join us. If you need directions for those, either contact the church office directly, or you can send an email to myself, or you can also see one of the emails that we've sent out to members of the congregation, which has that information. We'll be glad to give that to you and invite you to join us, even as our very special guests. Again, that will be going on on Palm Sunday, 9 o'clock a.m. for the Farrar United Methodist Church, and 11 o'clock p.m., for the Mingo United Methodist Church. And then during Holy Week, also practicing social distancing, we'll be offering a special service and that will be taking place here on YouTube. And you'll have an opportunity to share together with us in communion for a brief service, as well as on the Good Friday opportunity for us to gather again, again by YouTube. Both of those services will be at 7 p.m. We will also be offering live stream live services on our Zoom and we'll be glad to share with you again directions for that. Just make contact with the church and we'll be glad to send you the links that you'll do in order for you to join us, either by computer or by telephone. For those of you who do not have a computer or wish to join by telephone, we do have that capability also. Well, friends, as you go from this place, my prayer is that God will go with you and that the time that we've shared together today will be one where we breathe in Jesus and where we have the opportunity to remind ourselves of God is present in the, even in the midst of the greatest needs. Friends, go from this place and bear the light to a world that finds itself in darkness. Proclaim through the palm branches on your door. Proclaim it through the life that you live and that you may be a light in the midst of darkness. For this we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all the people said, Go be the church. Thanks, friends, for joining us. We will be having you look for us, and we will be sharing with you, and we'll also be keeping you in our prayers. May God go with you, and God's blessings. Bye-bye.